Jamil Giovanni, the first to throw his hat in the ring to replace Aaron O'Toole. Dan Kearns, The Standard. Durham. Despite the race to replace Durham MP Aaron O'Toole having yet to be made official, one candidate has already thrown his hat into the ring. In a recent video post on Twitter, Jamil Giovanni announced his intention to run as a Conservative candidate in Durham. We are in a pivotal time in Canadian history, and we need leaders to step up. Canada needs members of Parliament who can do two things. First, we need fighters, MPs who can stand up for the hard-working families of this country. I can do that. I've proven myself. I've stood up to big corporations, the mainstream media, and the woke establishment. I've taken their best shots, and I've survived to tell the story. We also need people who can lead with compassion. And I know what Canadians are going through today, Mr. Giovanni said. On his website, Mr. Giovanni is listed as a writer and broadcaster as well as a lawyer. Jamil knows what Canadians are going through today. He understands the urgent need for a more affordable, stronger economy, which works for Canadians of all cultural backgrounds, and that's why he was appointed the Government of Ontario's first-ever advocate for community opportunities. He also understands the importance of high-quality health care and public services. He is currently a cancer patient at North Durham General Hospital, now in remission, read a post on Mr. Giovanni's website. In late March, Mr. O'Toole announced he would be resigning his seat at the end of the spring session. I will never stop serving Canada. I am a proud Conservative and had the unique privilege to lead our party amid a challenging time for our country, Mr. O'Toole stated in a press release. The Conservative Party is the party of Confederation, and I know it will return to the government, offering the hope and ideas our country so desperately needs. I will help in any way I can, but will leave public life satisfied knowing my efforts and ideas will continue to resonate in the years to come. For more information on Mr. Giovanni's campaign, go online to www.votejamil.ca. Al-Anon celebrates 40 years of service. Katie Hunter, special to The Standard. For 40 years, Al-Anon has been a support group for people affected by someone else's drinking. It is a 12-step program which provides a supportive and non-judgmental environment for family members and friends of individuals with alcohol addiction to come together, share their experiences, and learn how to cope with the challenges of living with or being close to someone with addiction. Al-Anon is based on the principles of Alcoholics Anonymous, AA, and offers a similar approach to recovery. However, Al-Anon focuses specifically on the needs of those affected by someone else's drinking, rather than on the individuals struggling with alcohol addiction themselves. I attended a meeting on Monday night to better understand what they are about. Meeting some of these people was eye-opening and overwhelming to hear their stories and how much love and understanding they have coming into these meetings. We listened to two different people tell about their struggles with addiction and how these meetings changed not only their lives, but their families' lives as well. Learning an addiction is not just that, but a family disease. Some have grown up with an addiction in their household all their lives and have not even known it. The group offers support through regular meetings where participants can share their experiences, listen to others, and learn from the group's collective wisdom. The meetings are typically held in person or online and are free to attend. Al-Anon also provides literature and other resources to help members understand and cope with the impact of alcoholism on their lives. Al-Anon meetings are held worldwide and right here in our community. Families struggling with addiction often face various challenges and difficulties, which can be very stressful and overwhelming. Addiction is a disease which affects not only the individual struggling with it, but also their loved ones, including family members, partners, and friends. Families need to seek support and help when dealing with addiction. Support groups like Al-Anon can provide a safe environment for families to share their experiences, learn from others, and receive support and guidance. Professional counseling and therapy can also be helpful for families dealing with addiction-related issues. Families need to remember they are not alone and help is available. Remember, these meetings are not just for alcoholism, but for all addictions and everyone impacted. If you are looking for help for addiction, for yourself or someone you love, please check out your local library for Al-Anon books or call 905-728-1020.
you can also visit their website at https colon forward slash forward slash al dash non dot alateen dot on dot ca. Port Perry, Uxbridge, McDonald's locations look to make four charities make happy. Dan Kearns, The Standard, North Durham. The Scugog and Uxbridge communities are invited to come support four local children's charities when McHappy Day returns on Wednesday, May 10th. On McHappy Day, a portion of the proceeds from food and beverages sales at local McDonald's restaurants are donated towards local children's charities. This year, Port Perry and Uxbridge's McDonald's restaurants will be raising funds for Ronald McDonald House charities, the Jennifer Ashley Children's Charity, Precious Minds, and Big Brothers Big Sisters of North Durham. It fills my heart to support these charities. It thrills me to see how both the communities of Scugog and Uxbridge come together to support our restaurants and our cause. Charities are, at this time, having financial difficulties, and we want to somewhat ease their burden, franchise owner Ginger Jackson told The Standard. Chase Harding, executive director of Precious Minds, explained what it means to the local charity to be one of the recipients of this fundraiser. Precious Minds is incredibly thankful to be one of the 2023 McHappy Day recipients, along with three other amazing children's charities. This is such a wonderful opportunity to raise awareness about the work we all do in the community and to raise some much-needed funding to support the programs we offer. A heartfelt thank you to Sandy and Ginger Jackson and the wonderful staff teams at both McDonald's locations for all their hard work organizing and making McHappy Day so meaningful and memorable for all of us. Margaret Ayers, Executive Director of Big Brothers Big Sisters of North Durham, said in a statement how much her organization enjoys being part of this event. We all love being part of this event each year, working alongside the McDonald's team and our charity peers to plan this event with one goal in mind, helping children in North Durham is a true joy and we are honored to be part of this team. Jennifer Ashley Children's Charity Executive Director, Adrian Grant, said she is pleased to have her charity be part of this annual event. Thank you to the Jackson family, the restaurant teams, and the community for your generous support. McHappy Day is always a high quality, impactful, and fantastic day. We are honored to be working alongside such wonderful people and charities. In an online post on their website, Ronald McDonald House Charities Canada, RMHC, stated their appreciation for people and organizations who support them. In an average year, RMHC across Canada supports over 26,000 families, and we couldn't do it without your help. With your support on this McHappy Day, we can help more families from your community stay close. Because when families stay together, sick children get stronger. Welcome to You've Got to Be Kidding. A podcast that offers a different perspective of life around us. Listen now to author Jonathan Van Bilsen. Having flown more than 800 times, I only had the pleasure of sitting in the cockpit of a jetliner a few times, and in these cases it was pre-9-11. As you can appreciate, security has dictated no more visits with the pilot. You can imagine how thrilled I was last weekend when an opportunity to spend time in an Air Canada simulator arose. At last, not only do I get to peek into the cockpit, but I was also able to sit in the captain's chair and fly an Airbus A220. Air Canada has 33 of these jets, each with a range of about 6,000 kilometers. They are used to fly up to 137 passengers to the Caribbean and throughout North America. Sitting behind the joystick, they no longer have steering wheels, was quite a treat. I arrived and Captain Scott gave a short briefing before I took my seat. I was amazed at the reality of the graphics. The runway, the airport and even the marshalling or ground handling people were very lifelike. Scott pushed, flipped and toggled a number of controls and we were ready to take off. I taxied to the runway, gave it some gas, and a 39 meters or 127 foot machine began to move. The feeling was extremely lifelike. In fact, it was so real I felt as if I was being pushed back in my seat as I pulled on the joystick. We had liftoff. Scott directed me to retract the flaps in the wheels and the sound and vibration was just as it was in a real plane. I was in the air and everywhere I looked I could see familiar features the CN Tower, the Don Valley Parkway, and even Lake Skugog and Port Perry. I slowly banked the plane back toward the airport and let the autopilot do its thing. 
The aircraft is totally automatic and is capable of landing on its own. I saw the runway at Pearson in the distance. We tweaked a few buttons and were on track for a smooth landing. Scott flipped a few switches and suddenly we were flying at night. The city of Toronto was lit up just as I've seen it many times from the air. We began our approach and disengaged the autopilot. This would give me an opportunity to land the plane myself. A screeching sound acknowledged the autopilot was off and I firmly gripped the joystick. As we descended and hovered above the runway, I gently pulled back and I felt the aircraft's wheels touch the tarmac. There are two foot pedals, which act as steering and brake controls, when on the ground. It was not the straightest landing, but I managed to stop before we hit the grass, and there were no complaints from any of the passengers, even if they weren't fictitious. Thankfully, we did not get into any engine failures, tailspins, or stunt flying, as the reality of the flight would not have set well with my stomach. The experience was simply amazing, and a big thanks to Captain Scott McLean and Air Canada for the opportunity. I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen, and this is You've Got to Be Kidding. Keeping Healthy by Tina Y. Gerber McCurley It's important to support your mind, body, and soul by making small adjustments to your daily routine. Introducing small changes can have a big impact on your overall health. Setting a few small goals can lead to a healthier and happy life. Who doesn't want to enjoy those warm summer months, which will be upon us soon? We all have the best intentions regarding healthy eating and living. Now is the time to act. Let's face it, making those all-important choices can be hard, but together, we can succeed. We need a healthy diet and a healthy plan. This should include plenty of water, fruits, veggies, whole grains, lean proteins, low-fat dairy, nuts, and seeds. Veggies and fruits are loaded with fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Your body will feel more comfortable once a regular eating pattern has been established. Get rid of those donuts and sugary drinks. My weakness is still Dr. Pepper. Hydration is extremely important and it's often overlooked. Drinking plenty of water helps to ensure your body is functioning at optimal capacity. If you drink tea or coffee, the most beneficial intake is no more than four cups daily. Excessive caffeine can lead to insomnia and heart palpitations. Processed food can contribute to obesity, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. I have successfully brought my diabetes reading down from 27 to 21 to 6 to 7 consistently. By changing the foods I eat, eating more fruits and veggies, and fewer empty calories, such as chips and cookies. I have lost 41 pounds to date. I also understand this can be more challenging with the soaring food prices. Moderate exercise will also help maintain a healthy lifestyle and relieve daily stress. Remember to cut out risky behavior. You know what it is. While they say alcohol is fine in moderation, tobacco and drugs are bad for everyone, regardless of amount. A healthy plan will also include a good night's sleep. Getting quality sleep cannot be overstated. Poor sleep will reduce your physical and mental performance, whether playing sports, cards, coaching your child's little league, or at work. So make the effort to regulate your bedtimes. Finding your mental health, well-being, and emotional balance in life will benefit you and your entire family. Make time for self-care, whether it's a round of golf with the boys, having your nails done, or a time of fellowship and prayer. Many churches offer programs to eat healthier or locally drop in for a hot meal. If you feel overwhelmed with fear or anxiety because of poor health, whether physically, emotionally, or mentally, God provides peace and healing. You've Got to Be Kidding was presented by X4 Media with permission from the Standard Media Group. We endeavor to make all information contained in this program as accurate as possible at production time. X4 Media and the Standard Media Group are not responsible for any liabilities resulting from information contained in this program. For more information, please visit x4media.ca. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for the Standard Newspaper.